First Corinthians chapter number 9, we'll pick up reading. Verse number 19. The Bible says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that by that I might by all means save some. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. I'm thankful for Calvary. Lord, we're thankful that one day some 2,000 years ago you went up Golgotha's Hill to bearing your cross down to Via Della Rosa. And Lord, you were suspended between heaven and earth where you bled and died and paid the sin debt for all mankind. Lord, I'm glad that wasn't the end of the story. You was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. Lord, us that Lord... Uh, have been saved by the good grace of God. We've died out to sin and been raised in newness of life because of the work, the finished works of Calvary. Lord, we're thankful to be in church tonight. We're thankful to have your promises. We're thankful, Lord, to be able to stand to proclaim what thus saith the Lord. Now, I pray for the next few minutes that you'd put a hedge about us. I pray you'd speak to our hearts. I pray you'd set a challenge before your people. I pray that you'd burden us for those that are lost without Christ. God, I certainly pray if there be any amongst us tonight who's lost, that tonight would be the night of their salvation. I pray for that one tonight that, Lord, may be carrying a heavy load. I pray that tonight, Lord, you would bear them up and you'd carry them and their load. Father, I pray for that one that is seeking, as Brother Clint sang, that God... Tonight, they'd find what they're seeking for in the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I pray for some that are needing an answer, that tonight they'll hear from heaven and get the answer they need. Whatever the need is of anybody's heart tonight, may the Lord Jesus Christ meet those needs. Now, Father, we pray for those that are sick. I pray you would touch them. I pray for Miss Mary there in the hospital. Lord, you'd be with her. and the Lord, you'd touch her and help her and strengthen her. And God, I'm reminded the psalmist said that uh, death had got hold on him, but the Lord showed him mercy and raised him up. And God, I pray you'd touch her, raise her up, help her. God, I pray for those that, Lord, are just under the weather. I pray for Brother Donald. I pray for little Elizabeth. I pray for little Ella. I do pray for Riker, and I pray for Isaiah, and I pray for others. I pray for Miss Nancy and others, Lord, that uh, you touch them and help them. I pray for Brother Bob Drake and his upcoming surgery. You'd be with him and help him. I thank you for hearing and answering prayer. I thank you for Miss Kathy doing so much better. Thank you for that and others. Lord, you've heard and answered prayer. Now, Father, I pray for little Samantha. You touch her and help her with her upcoming tests. That, God, you'd put a watch guard about her and you'd strengthen her. And, God, I pray you'd give the doctors the wisdoms to give her better quality of life. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd use this unworthy vessel. And, God, I pray you'd speak to hearts now. Lord, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. For it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Name here. Amen. Here we find the great apostle Paul writing to a very carnal church. And we find that in his writings he has to feed them with milk because they weren't ready for meat. Uh, and we find that he deals with a lot of things that are going on there in that church at Corinth. Uh, and by the time he gets down to chapter number 9, he starts this chapter, he has to substantiate some things. Uh, he makes it clear that those that preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Uh, and he goes on to conclude at this thing... Uh, he said, lest when I preach to others, and I myself become a castaway. So in between that, he gives them part of his burden. Uh, 
we find that in verse number 19, he says, For though I be free from all men, uh, and he goes on to say some things. Uh, but I got to reading that, and I got to thinking about uh, that we're freed. Aren't you glad you're free tonight? Uh, if the Son have set you free, you've been free indeed. Uh, got to thinking about being free. Can I say I'm glad of being freed by being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? Uh, I'm glad that my sin debt has been paid. I'm glad that I'm no longer held bound uh, by the bondage of sin. Uh, I was on the auction block of sin. Nobody could pay my sin debt. Uh, I was going to go to hell. That's where I deserve to go. Uh, but I'm glad that Jesus died on Calvary and shed his blood uh, to be our propitiation, uh, to make a way to free me from the bondage of sin. Uh, I'm glad I'm redeemed tonight. I'm glad I'm saved by the good grace of God. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, I have eternal life uh, because of the Lord Jesus. Uh, I, I'm not only freed, and you're not only freed if you're saved uh, by being redeemed, but I'm thankful that I'm uh, freed by being robed tonight. Uh, I don't stand here tonight in my own righteousness, in my own goodness, uh, in my own abilities, in my own works, uh, but that night when he redeemed me, uh, 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 Brother Tony, I didn't even know all that happened that night, uh, but I later found out, uh, Brother Adrian, uh, when he redeemed me, he robed me in his righteousness. Uh, hey, I don't have to stand on my own accord. Uh, I'm glad he stood for me. Uh, and when the Father looks at me, uh, he don't see my old testament tattered garment. Uh, he don't see my worthlessness. Uh, he sees the robe of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he sees the blood of the Lamb. Uh, and when he looks at you and I, uh, he says we're freed because he sees Christ. What a blessing. Uh, I got to thinking I'm only freed because uh, I've been redeemed. I'm not only free because I've been robed. Uh, but we're freed by the residing of the Holy Ghost. I'm glad when he saved me, he sealed me with the Holy Spirit of promise. I don't know, again, I didn't know all this, Brother Ron, when I got saved. But there was something that happened. A supernatural thing happened. When I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit did a supernatural thing. He cut away the fleshly, stony part of the heart and he moved in uh, and took up residence in my life. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, hey, uh, uh, when I got saved, uh, uh, it, it was always the same, but I'd never seen it that way. Uh, the sky looked bluer. Uh, the grass looked greener. Uh, uh, the birds sounded sweeter. Uh, why? Uh, because I just started living, uh, and the Creator moved into the creature uh, and made a new creature out of me. What a blessing, huh? It was kind of like... Uh, when you watch The Wizard of Oz, the first part of it's in black and white. Uh, but when they get to Oz, everything went to color. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, folks that are dead in trespasses and sin, uh, they don't really know what the, uh, this whole thing's about. Uh, but if they'd ever get saved, uh, their outlook would surely change. Uh, I'm glad I've been freed. Uh, can I say this? I'm free uh, in the fact that we are received. Uh, I'm received by the Lord. Uh, I have access uh, to the throne of God. Anytime I want to talk to God, uh, I can talk to him. Uh, anytime uh, I just say, Father, he's right there to listen. Uh, what a blessing to have access. Uh, there's one mediator between God and man, uh, and that's Christ Jesus. Uh, and I have access uh, to the Father through Jesus anytime I want. What a blessing. I'm reminded, you've heard me use this illustration before, but it still rings true. There were two boys uh, playing in a yard, uh, and they was having a good old time, and the one boy looked at the other one and said, I sure would like to meet the man that lives in this house right here. And the other boy said, you would? He said, sure. He said, well, follow me. And they walked around the back and went through the kitchen and uh, walked on in through this big old uh, 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 room with a big conference table and that little boy walked in and all them men kind of uh, were aghast who was this young boy with, uh, with another boy coming in his room interrupting our meeting uh, and that boy said uh, Father uh, 
this is my little friend and he wanted to meet the man who lives in his house. Uh, uh, his father stood up uh, and said, hello, my name's Abe Lincoln. I'm sure glad to meet you. Uh, it was little Todd Lincoln playing with a little fella uh, on the White House lawn. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, hey, uh, all of heaven has to stop and the state of affairs have to stop. Uh, when I want to talk to my father, uh, he takes time to listen to me. Uh, we have access. What a blessing. Why? Because I've been freed. I received access. And then I thought about this. We are freed from the rudiments of this world. Listen, our atomic constitution uh, and condemnation has been overruled uh, by our he heavenly citizenship in Christ. Look, I'm no better than anybody else in this world. But I've been freed. And I'm in this world, but I'm no longer of this world. Hmm? I am above the rudiments of this world. Listen, because you're saved, you shouldn't live like people in this world live. Hmm? You ought to have some standards about you. You ought to live different because you're not of this world. huh? This may sound crude, but it's true. When my children were little, I'd take them over to the mall. And I'd point out certain people. I said, see that? So you ever come home looking like that? I'm going to beat the devil out of you. Hmm? I tell them, say, we're fosters. We don't look like that. Hmm? Can I say? We're Christians. We're not to look like this world. We're not to act like this world. huh? And by the way, if you start acting like this world and you're saved, our Father will beat the devil out of you. huh? He's got a chastening rod. That's not popular preaching anymore, but uh, it is still in the Bible. And just go over there and uh, 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 read Hebrews chapter number 12. And the Bible says if you're without chastisement, you're a bastard, not a son. And can I say, God does not chasten the devil's children. But if his children get out of line, he does know how to correct them. Hmm? And by the way, let me just say this, Brother Ray. You know this as well as I do. You can't even take a step in the wrong direction that he's not warning you. Don't take that step. Hmm? I worry about people that can go out and dally and live in sin and it never bothers them. Uh, listen, they don't have the same Holy Ghost living inside of them that I've got. Uh, I'm glad I've been freed from the rudiments of this world. Well, I'm interested in, you, if you read again in verse 19, it says, For though I be free from all men, yet I've made myself a servant unto all that I might gain the more. And then he said in verse number 20, And unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might, here it is again, gain the Jews. And then he goes on to say, As uh, uh, to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. And then in verse 21, he goes on to say that uh, uh, them that are without the law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. Verse 22, he says, uh, To the weak became I as weak, that I, here it is again, I might gain the weak. Uh, and you say, what is that word gain? I mean, five times he mentions that he wants to gain. Five is the number of grace. But what does that, what, what does he mean, that I might gain the more, that I might gain some, that I might, well, it's summarized in verse 22. He says, I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some now the apostle Paul couldn't save anybody but what he's saying when he gains people he gains them by them getting saved by the good grace of God and so with that thought tonight I want to preach on how to gain some I'd sure like to gain them all but how can we gain some and the reality of it is if we all gain one in the next year, our congregation will double. Hmm? Before you gain all, why don't you just gain one? Hmm? I had a guy tell me not long ago, he said, well, this guy can raise a million dollars for Christ and for the Caribbean. I said, well, let me do this. Have him gain a thousand first. Well, let him raise a thousand first. Quit talking about a million. Let's raise a thousand. Huh? How come everybody always shoots for the sky? Hmm? I'm all for it, but let's do something. Uh, 
it's easy to sit back and say, we're going to gain the whole world. Just gain one. And then after you gain one, gain another. Then after you gain that one, gain another. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you gained anybody? Hmm? How to gain some. We're hopefully going to give you from the Scriptures how you can gain some. By the way, if it wasn't for the Apostle Paul, you and I wouldn't be saved tonight. Amen. So he did gain some. Hmm? He brought the gospel to the known world and to the Gentile world. There had been no gospel come to America had there not been the Apostle Paul. Can I say this? The Bible says in Revelation 14, I believe it's 13, and their works do follow them. Can I say the Apostle Paul is still winning people to God? Hmm? So how do you gain some? Well, he gives us the insight in these verses. Can I say this? We can gain some, first of all, through eliminating ourselves. Look again in verse number 19. He says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself a servant unto all, that I might gain the more. If there was anybody that could ever boast in who they were in Christ, it would be the Apostle Paul. But you know what the Apostle Paul said about himself? He said, I was the chief of sinners. He said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. He gave all the praise to Christ. And let me just help you right now. Nobody can save anybody. But we can be instruments that the Lord chooses to use to point them to Him that He might save them. Now, Brother Brian, he did not choose to write the gospel in the sky for people to come to Him. He chose to take those He had redeemed to go to a lost and dying world to sow the seed of the gospel. And some of us are planting, and some of us are watering, but God gives the increase. But the Apostle Paul said, in order to gain the more, he himself became a servant. Even though he was freed from all men, he became a servant. Now this was common man's language back in that day. Back in that day, Miss Lisa, if you had no job and there wasn't like you just go to Walmart and fill out an application and get a job. If you had no, no crops to sell or no uh, uh, livestock to sell and you had no trade that was uh, available that anybody wanted to use and you yourself had to put food on your table, you could become a servant to somebody that was wealthy. You would enter into a legal contract with them uh, and they would supply you with food, they'd supply you with clothing, they'd supply you with housing, they would take care of you, uh, but you would have to labor for them uh, uh, usually for a period of at least seven years you'd become a servant. Apostle Paul said this, he said, I'm free from all men, but if I have to become a servant to some to gain some, I'm willing to do that. What he's saying is I'm eliminating myself. I am not going to have any pride, I'm not going to have any prejudice, I'm not going to have anything that stands between me and anybody else that I might be able to win them. Hmm? Did you ever look at somebody that was homeless and say, Ugh, turn up your nose? The Apostle Paul wouldn't. Because the Apostle Paul didn't see maybe their uncleanness, their raggedy clothes, their situation. What the Apostle Paul saw was somebody that needed to be saved. And the Apostle Paul said, I'll eliminate myself. I'll eliminate everything that constitutes who I am that I might win that person right there. Mm -mm. Can I say, you want to gain somebody? Quit looking at their situation and look at their need. And their need is Jesus. Mm -hmm. huh? That person you work to that gets absolutely gets on your nerves? Anybody got somebody like that? Sure. That's why I like working alone. Hmm? People say for you, preacher, why don't we get a daycare? Fine, off site. I ain't putting up with all that noise around here. Huh? I like my peace and quiet. Huh? It's all I can do to tolerate Brother Ray when he stops in and say, Hey, preacher, here's the mail. How you doing? Huh? It's like, okay, Ray, it's time for you to leave. I like it quiet. Huh? No, you know that co worker you got that gets on your nerves? Brother Clint, you got any of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'm picking on you because you wouldn't say a bad thing about anybody, huh? Huh? I ain't even going to talk about you and your co-workers. No? You know how every day you do not look forward to going to work because you're going to have to put up with that person. Maybe they got a foul mouth. Maybe they got a sorry attitude. Maybe they think they're better than you. Maybe they just don't work. And you're working hard and they're not working at all. Huh? It just gets on your nerves. Huh? Thad, you remember that, that chick that was in the Phantom of the Opera? Huh? Remember that? How she got on your nerves every single... You didn't have a gray hair till that woman moved in, right? Huh? Yeah, you got a bunch of them now, huh? Huh? I don't even know who the woman was, but I've heard him talk about her. Huh? Listen. It's easy to get frustrated with people. But what you got to see is what they really need. They need Jesus. And you arguing, being nasty back to them is never going to win them to Jesus. Paul said, even though I'm free from all men, he said, I'll become a servant to servants that I might gain the more. Hmm? See, if we're going to gain some, we got to eliminate us. You got to eliminate our feelings, our emotions. You got to eliminate our inadequacies. You got to eliminate our fears. Well, if I tell them about the Lord, they may say something about me. If you don't tell them about the Lord, they may die and go to hell. What are they going to say about you at the great white throne judgment when you're sitting over there on the glory side and they're being sentenced to hell? Hmm? And then their blood will be required at your hands. Uh, You've got to eliminate all that stuff that you might gain some. They may never come to Christ, but at least you tried. Can I say, we can gain some through eliminating ourselves. We can gain some by educating ourselves. I know that's a dirty word, education. Hmm? Huh? You know why Paul in the Bible many times says, be not ignorant? Because a lot of times we're lazy and we choose to be ignorant. Right. We choose not to learn. But do you realize you've been given the Bible, and the Bible says where much is given, much is required? Yeah. Hmm? But look what Paul says in verse 20. And unto the Jews I became a Jew that I might gain the Jews. You know what he's saying? The Jews was the religious crowd. He said the only way that I'm going to win the religious crowd is I've got to meet them at their, own, at their own game. I've got to be educated enough to tell them what they know is not proper. You know why you won't witness to that person? That might be a Roman Catholic or might be a Jew, or might be, you know, Presbyterian or something else, because you're not confident enough in the Scriptures that you can refute what they believe. Hmm? You know why you're scared to death of a JW knocking on your door? Because you're going to have to deal with them. You know, Jehovah's Witnesses spend hours each week in a classroom setting, and they're absolutely brainwashed with the same stuff week after week after week after week after week and that's what they know you know what they don't know it's what the scriptures say right. now you can ask Miss Annette when they come knocking at our door I'll open the door and I'm very polite well as polite as I get and I say look I'm a Baptist preacher I don't want to hear anything you have to say but if you open your mouth you're asking for it and then they'll start saying something about the kingdom. Okay, you asked for it. So I'll give them some scripture, especially on hell, because they don't believe in hell. Hmm? They believe we're living in hell right now. Well, I want to tell you this. This is as close to hell as we're ever going to get as ch children of God. 
But there is a literal place called hell right now for the souls of the damned. And then one day death and hell is going to deliver up all the damned to uh, the great white throne judgment. And then they're going to be sentenced to the lake of fire uh, where there'll be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, uh, total darkness, total separation of God. Uh, and they'll be tortured and tormented in a flame that will never go out, my dear friends. Uh, so I'll tell them about hell. And I'll tell them that they're uh, uh, their, their scriptures aren't right and I'll tell them that Jesus Christ wasn't a fallen angel I'll tell them he is the darling son of God and they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved you say what happens they get off my porch real quick huh? it's amazing them and the Mormons both just got to say something so that gives me a license and I'll say something I'll never forget when we moved from our old house to our current house. I, I, Ray, you might have been there. Some of you guys might have been there. Brother Randy, you might have been there. And we was moving. And then Mormons showed up. And they, they helped us load the truck. <laughs> and I told them, I was a Baptist preacher. And so then after they helped load the truck on the street corner, I preached to them for a while. I forget who it was. Somebody said, oh, Brother Doug's loading them up out there, huh? Listen, you know why you don't do that? Because you don't spend enough time in that book to have confidence to know what it says so you can refute, refute what they believe. Hmm? By the way, i got a whole library. You want to know what Mormons believe? I'll give you a book on it. You want to know what Jehovah's Witnesses believe? I'll give you a book on it. You want to know what Roman Catholics believe? I'll give you a book on it. You want to know what any other cult uh, or any other denomination believes? I'll give you a book on it. Uh, educate yourself. Paul said to the Jews, I became a Jew that I might gain the more. Uh, what's he saying? He said, you've got to educate yourself if you're going to deal with this crowd, huh? You got to know what that Hillsong crowd believes. You got to know what that Crossroad crowd believes. You got to know what they believe, uh, and you got to know what the Bible says so you can tell them the truth. Now, are you going to win them all? No, but you might win some. But I promise you this burying your head in the sand, they're going to die and go to hell. Hmm. How do we gain some? By eliminating yourself, by educating yourself, and also by being evident. Look at verse 21. Look what he says. To them that are without the law, as without the law, be not without the law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. Now, what is he saying there? He's saying those that aren't religious. They're still under the law of God. God gave us the word of God. He gave us the law as our schoolmaster that we might know what is sin. And can I say, they're under the law of God even if they've never studied it or never heard it. They're going to give an account to it uh, because it's available to them. Uh, but they're not educated in it. They don't know much about the Bible. They don't know much about church. They don't know much about what we do around here. They don't care about what we're doing around here. On Sunday, they're playing golf. They're fishing. They're going to a ball game. Uh, they're sitting at the house. They're going shopping. They're doing whatever they do. Church does not enter into their mind. Paul said, those that are without the law, I become evident to them. What does that mean? That means he's real. He's genuine. He's true. He shows them that what he has is what they really need. Hmm? Uh, again, we've got to be evident. Those that do not know, know anything about the Lord, they ought to see something in us that they don't have. They ought to see that there is a void in their life, that all that they are doing to try and find pleasure, to try and find entertainment, to try and find happiness, to try and find joy, it still leaves a void in their life, but they see joy, happiness, and gladness in our life. And that ought to, they ought to start asking questions. What makes you tick? His name is Jesus. Nowhere in this is Paul saying, I became a sinner to win sinners. What Paul is saying is that I came to a place in my life uh, that I didn't allow anybody else's sin cause them to go on to go to hell. I became relevant so that they could see Christ in me. Hmm. 
we find that it became evident we can gain some by eliminating ourselves, getting the clay out of the way. We can gain some by educating ourselves. We can gain some by being evident, being real. Mm -mm. People all just know we're different. And then I thought about this. We can gain some by being in. I got one of them tongue-tied moments. By showing empathy, by being empathetic. Look what he said in verse 22. To the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak. Can I say that there are some folks that are facing some very, very traumatic situations in their life. Paul said... To those folks, he became delicate. To those that were feeble, he became feeble. He showed empathy. To those that were broken, he became broken. To those that were skittish, he showed them they had nothing to fear. Hmm? He showed empathy. What's the old adage? People don't care till they know you care. When you show them that you care, then they'll be willing to listen to what you have to say. And can I say the best way to show people you care is listen to them? Everybody has a story to tell. Can I say we live in a fractured world? I cannot believe how broken people are. you got to understand, in my lifetime, there have been some tremendous changes. In my lifetime, we've sent a man to the moon. That's when I got my first color TV, by the way. My parents bought the first color TV so, so we could see the moon landing. I was raised on a black and white TV. It wasn't no big deal because most of the shows were in black and white. Uh, I've seen all the modern technologies the microwave, the video recorder. How many remembers the beta recorders? Huh? Uh, how many of you remember when you had a remote control, but it had a wire on it? Huh? Man, we grew up, you turned the knob on the TV, and then when the knob broke because it was plastic, you had a pair of pliers and you turned the channel. Huh? I remember, how many of you know what rabbit ears are? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everybody went to bed by 1 o'clock because they, they played the national anthem and the TV was off. You know? What no 6 million channels 24 hours a day. And all the strives that have come from it. You know, I remember records, then 8-tracks, then cassettes, then CDs, then flash drives, and now everything's streamed. It is a horrible thing to buy a new car and you can't put anything in it to make you hear the songs you want to hear. you got to download everything to your phone and run it through your phone. Who's smart enough to do that? Get you an eight-year-old so you can learn how to drive your car. I'm not kidding you. The last car that I rented when I was somewhere down in Florida or something, I didn't even know how to turn it on. I did not. It had an iPad in the middle of it. And I'm sitting there looking like an idiot. I'm thinking, how in the world do you make this thing? And I finally got it to where I could turn it on and put it in gear, and that's all I needed to know. Uh, but I'm saying, I've seen all these changes. And a lot of these things are great. Listen, I remember when people smoked on airplanes. Huh? And it wasn't, it wasn't that long ago you'd still get on an airplane and had an ashtray. Uh, now you get on an airplane and you got your own private TV screen. Pretty good deal. A lot of these things are great. But what has come with a lot of these things are broken homes. I remember when the word divorce was taboo. 
And now we live in a society where people have been divorced multiple times. They have multiple different children, his, hers, theirs, others. That's a way of life, and I'm not throwing off on those. These people have situations where they need comforted. We live in a day and age where Kinsey testified the other night where a lot of young people have been abused by family members. We live in a day and age where children are taught you can choose what kind of gender you want to be. I remember growing up and they told you you could be a fireman if you wanted to be or you could be a police officer. I, I mean, there, there was never, you want to be a girl? huh? That teacher wouldn't have lasted too long where I raised, was raised, you know what I'm saying? Huh? It wouldn't have went to the school board. Parents would have took care of that. Huh? I remember back when I was raised, you in the library, you, you had a librarian, and all she knew how to do was go, shh. Now they show you books where mommy's married to mommy. That is sick. But I'm telling you, people are in this world that don't know anything about the Bible. They've never been taught anything about uh, 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 really morality. And these folks need somebody to show them some empathy, show them you care, and show them the truth. Now, I know the Word of God break it like a hammer, but if you take a sledgehammer to these people that are already fractured, you'll never win them. You'll utterly destroy them. You've got to show them compassion and love empathy I'm amazed in pastoring some of the problems that folks deal with some of the problems their children deal with and when I tell you you will never know the hurt behind the smiles that people bring into the house of God you won't people are hurting and what they need to see is the love of God and Paul said to the weak I became weak that I might gain some I remember in the 70s where, you know, preachers beat their chest and, you know, they, they just blasted everything. They'd take TVs out back and shoot it with a 357 Magnum. Boy, did that make you feel like a man? It amazes me. All them guys that shot TVs and preached against TVs, they all have them now. When did God change his mind? It just shows you the ignorance that some people had. I heard one guy say one time that he chose wives for his sons and his sons had never been to a shopping mall. I'm thinking, Lord, have mercy. When they get out on their own, they're going to explode. They won't, they won't be able to handle life. Never been to a shopping mall? Huh? No wonder they look Amish. Let them go pick out some clothes. Huh? I've, I've heard so many ignorant things because people don't read the Bible. Paul said that weak, I became weak. You know, back 100 years ago when I was in sales, I learned a very important lesson. If you make a friend out of somebody, they'll not only buy from you this time, they'll buy from you every time. You know the best way to get somebody to Christ? Make a friend out of them. Befriend them. Show them you're just a real person. That's what Paul's doing. Show them you care. That's how you'll gain some. And then, lastly, how do you gain some? Paul makes it clear you gain some by being an example. Look what it says in verse 22. He said, To the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak. Now look what he says. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Paul said, I'm an example. Just, just be an example. Listen, there are people out there that think if you come to church all the time, you're like that person they've seen on the documentary goes to a snake handling church. Rest assured, as long as I'm pastor, ain't going to be no snakes in here, huh? Oh, uh, no, but they think that. Or they think that everybody goes to church is just trying to rip people off. I don't know if you saw that Hillsong documentary. I think it was on Netflix or something. It was like three or four episodes. And you see how they manipulate people. And people watch that and they think every church is that way. Yeah. 
They make it clear. They, they, they know how to adjust the temperature in the place to get people to react in a certain way. They use the music to get people to react a certain way. They manipulated people over and over and over again, and when people found it out, they were ticked off. And so everybody thinks we're that way. Hmm? I can tell you we do not adjust the temperature to create a mood. Because if we did, Sunday I'd have preached on hell because there's about 400 degrees in here, huh? The only way that we're ever going to impact and change those people's minds, do you know how many people has been hurt in church? Been hurt by a deacon or been hurt by a Sunday school teacher or been hurt by a preacher or been hurt by another church member? And how are we going to change that culture, that thinking? We've got to show them something different. Paul said, I became all things to all men that by all means I might save some. How do you do that? When we do it in our walk, they see something different in how we conduct ourselves. Hmm? No man that was raised in a church of God and he said every Sunday the services would last till about two in the afternoon and everybody got saved whether they needed it or not every Sunday. And he was so burnt out on church by the time he, he became grown. You can't hardly get him around to church. He said, and when he has went to church, a couple of Baptist fellows he knows, every time he goes, the preacher preaches on hell. I told him, I might be trying to tell you something, but anyway. This is, we, I developed a good relationship with this guy, and this is what the guy told me. He said, of all the Baptist people, and especially preachers I've ever met, he said, you're not like any of them. He said, I really enjoy hanging out with you. I took that as a compliment. Can I help you? Some, there's some Baptist preachers I don't like hanging out with. Huh? What did he see? He saw something different. Now, he promised me to come to church he never has, but I know he's watched. Matter of fact, he chewed me out one time because I threw a handkerchief at you. It was your fault. Don't ever make me throw a handkerchief at you. No, he come in. Why did you throw that handkerchief at that guy? I said, because he was sitting there. I said, he's okay. He's got big shoulders. That handkerchief didn't hurt him. What I'm trying to say is show them Christ. The Jews hated Christ because he would eat with sinners. Because he would hang out with people they deemed wretched. Because he had the audacity to sit down and meet with people who didn't wash their hands. Say, that, that's a publican. Well, Jesus came seeking to save that which was lost. Jesus said, they that are not sick don't need a physician. Why did the publicans and sinners like hanging out with Jesus? Because he was different than the Jews. He showed them compassion. We ought to be an example in our walk. We ought to be an example in our words. We shouldn't talk like that other crowd. They ought to really sense a love and devotion of God just by the way we carry ourselves and the way we talk. Hmm? We ought to be an example in our worship. They've seen a crowd that goes to church and acts one way at church and acts another way out in the world. They've also seen a crowd that tells them they need to get saved, they need to go to church, but then that person doesn't go to church all the time. They ought to see an example in our worship. They ought to see a devotion to Christ that they don't see anywhere else. Let me help you something. We don't have enough money to compete with the devil. But we've got a big enough God that the devil don't want to come around. We don't have all the lights and bells and whistles that a lot of these big old, whatever they are, circuses have. But we can show them Christ. 
And if we don't show them Christ out there, they'll never come in here to see Christ. We can gain some. We can gain some by eliminating ourselves, by educating ourselves, by being evident, by being empathetic, and by being an example. Here's my challenge. Ask God to help you to be all things to all men that you might gain some. If the Lord blesses us to have another year, ask the Lord to help you to win one. You win one person to God, it'll set a fire in you. You want to win somebody else. Ask God to put somebody in your life that you can win. Just gain some. Can we all just strive to gain some? Because here's the reality. If we don't start gaining some, we'll start losing some by attrition. Some will cross over and go to heaven. Who's going to replace them? Some might fall by the wayside. Who's going to replace them? Some may become providentially hindered. And they can't come anymore. And they end up just getting to watch on live stream. Who's going to replace them? And I say it's not just the pastor, it's everybody's responsibility to take the gospel yes. to every yes. creature. Would you ask God to put somebody in your life and help you to gain some? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come and get a song of invitation. While they're picking our song, let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, I know as Christians we have lives and I know that everybody's busy and I know that everybody faces trials and everybody faces sufferings and problems. And Lord, we being human can very easily get caught up in our problems and our trials and our busyness. And we lose sight of the fact that there are people broken, lost, and need Christ. God, I pray that you'd burden our hearts to gain some. God, put somebody in each of our paths that we can win to Christ. God, equip us that we might gain some. God, purpose in our minds that folks need Christ. Lord, help us to be reminded that's why you left us here, to be a light into the world, to be salt to this tasteless world, to impact and make a difference. You said in Jude, and of some having compassion, making a difference. God, help us to gain some. Now, God bless, blessing this invitation. God, it wasn't a salvation message, but maybe somebody here tonight needs to be freed. I pray the sweet Holy Spirit would convict them and we'd see them born again. Those that have been set free, oh God, help them to enjoy the freedom they have in Christ. But God, burden them to gain some. Bless now this invitation. Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.